I know that this longevity topic is quite popular at the moment, but sometimes the hype of certain things is way out of proportion and there are many things you can do that end up wasting your time and money. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the things you need to avoid when it comes to longevity so that you wouldn't waste your time. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. So the first thing is quite obvious, I hope for at least most people, and it's uh, taking supplements while neglecting exercise and a good diet. Now, of course, there are some supplements that do have some beneficial effects on longevity and health span in humans even. I've made some videos about it, you can check it out, but none of the supplements are as powerful as a good diet and a consistent exercise routine. Exercise is the most powerful drug, and if we got the benefits of exercise from a pill, then everyone would want to take that pill. It's in human nature to try to have the shortcut to take the magic pill that just solves your issues. But so far, there's no pill, there's no supplement, there's no drug that is as powerful as exercise. And if you are someone who is a bit overweight and they're not really fit, they're not really exercising that much, they're kind of skinny or skinny fat or overweight, like I said, then none of the supplements are going to solve your issues. You would want to actually solve your issues with a good diet and exercise. Disappoint! And I'm not saying that you shouldn't take any supplements. Some supplements are good, like I said. It's just that you don't want to neglect the exercise and the good diet. The second point is also very relevant, which is neglecting relationships. Did you know that social relationships and close communities are actually very predictive of long life and reduced mortality? Loneliness, unhappiness and being isolated is actually very bad for a health and it might increase the risk of mortality. You don't want to become this neurotic biohacker monk who is just so hyper-focused on their biohacking and their health routines and their supplements that their relationships begin to suffer. Because turns out, based on the research, then their relationships are actually much more important than any of the supplements and actually almost as good as a good diet. And I'm also not saying that you should always make some sort of compromises. If you have friends who with bad habits, they smoke, they drink, they eat a bad diet, etc. And they try to persuade you to follow those bad habits. Then of course you should try to find a different solution, like either find new friends or try to convince them to change their habits. But you should never like become this very neurotic, uh, isolated monk, if that makes sense. Point number three is following risky behaviors. It doesn't matter how hardcore of a biohacking routine you follow. It doesn't matter how many supplements you take. It doesn't matter how good of a diet you follow. You could still die prematurely if you get hit by a bus or something else. So you should always keep this in mind. There are many unpredictable situations in the world that could shorten your life quite a lot. You can't really avoid them. You don't even know when they might happen. But what you can certainly do is to minimize your exposure. You minimize your risk of exposing yourself to these kinds of events. What I'm talking about is driving a car without the seatbelt on. Driving a motorcycle itself is actually very risky. There are many risky behaviors that you can easily avoid. Now, of course, if you are the kind of person who loves the thrill of risk, you love parachute jumping, you love bungee jumping, you love riding a motorcycle, then of course it's your life. It's your decision. You decide what you do with your life. But understand that these things are inherently more riskier. And statistically speaking, they might increase your risk of mortality due to unexpected accidents or unexpected events. So you just need to think about it, whether or not it is worth it for you. Number four is neglecting happiness, which is actually very linked to the previous points. If you are socially isolated and you become depressed and anxious and unhappy because you're so isolated, for example, or because it's so hard for you to stick to your health routines, then obviously it's not really worth it. Like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how long you live if you're unhappy. And I'm pretty sure that most people would choose a slightly shorter life as long as they're happy and as long as they're fulfilled. So happiness is actually one of the biggest goals or aspirations us humans have. We want to live longer so that we could be happier or we could extend like our happiness for longer periods of time with others. But if you're socially isolated, if you're depressed, if you're sad, if you're unmotivated, if you're unhappy, then yeah, like most people wouldn't actually want to live any longer. And of course, happiness depends on a lot of factors. And sometimes happiness isn't even that important as long as you're fulfilled, because some people can even find fulfillment and meaning in un unhappiness, or they can find meaning and fulfillment in things that are hard or difficult. So do you prioritize your happiness and fulfillment? And then 
and try to extend your life so that you could feel fulfilled and feel happy for as long as possible. Winning. And the last point that I'm going to cover is not changing your ideas when we have new science coming out. So this applies to all the things. This applies to exercise, diets and supplements. Science is constantly evolving. We do have new studies coming out all the time that uh, give us new insights into whether or not some supplements are effective or not, whether or not some diets are more effective or not, whether or not some diets increase the risk of mortality or not. So science isn't conclusive. Science is always updating itself. That's the idea behind science. We don't have any definite ideas. We don't have any definite answers to what causes aging and what's good for longevity. What you can do is to just follow the current most advanced guidelines and to always be evidence-based, to follow the evidence and then be willing to change your habits. Because some people might not even change their habits even if new evidence comes out. They're just so stuck in their habit loop that they ignore the new evidence and they just keep hammering through. I'll tell you immediately that this is definitely not a good idea. You have to be open-minded and willing to change your diet, willing to change your supplements, willing to change your routines. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.